Hey everyone, so yeah, I know I've been off for the better part of a year. Um, it's just been a crazy year, but I'm back at it again with a uh, new reviews of Catfish. Um, turns out I thought the episodes I, I did do last year were part of season 9, but they're actually part of season 8. Um, so I'm picking up where, well, not exactly where I left off, but uh, the last episode that I hadn't started watching, which was uh, season eight, episode 65, um, Casey and Mike. Um, I decided not to do, because um, I watched, uh, the last episode I did was, um, was 49 um diamond and steve but like i said i'm just gonna pick up where i left off where uh, the last episode that i hadn't watched was like i said 65 so um like i said it's casey and mike um so casey's a mom of two from michigan uh i met mike a little over two years ago um He's 33, lives in Tennessee, and working as a supposed handyman. Um, he claims to her that um, he will come to live with her um, and take care of not only her but her kids, and he has yet to do so. Um, he has even ghosted not only in person, uh, but on social media or on the social media that uh, she has for him so you know Neve and Cammy are back at you know uh, traveling to people to um, kind of do this in person now instead of like through zoom and all that um, so they travel to Michigan um, and not only does he have a new phone but he has a new phone number um, twice already so far he's taught he stops he has stopped talking to her um and only gives her the answer of like well i needed to go off the grid um we'll get to why he says that later um and, and so uh he has sent her money twice before once through walmart to walmart and then the other was through um a cash app um the one that the money they sent her through walmart was under the name todd um so she has a voice note from him through her text messages and you know cam is like that sounds like a black dude i wasn't gonna say nothing but uh, i wasn't gonna say nothing but hey if if it walks like a duck it quacks like a duck and it's more than likely a duck. But anyway, so they leave, start investigating, um, start with Facebook. Um, they see that he's in a relationship, but with whom, since we know that Casey and Mike aren't in an exclusive relationship. So um, they look at his friends on his page and all of them look to be women. Uh, they check the photos, don't get really any hits. They do the same for the phone numbers and don't get anything either with that. They check the cash app that Casey has for Mike, and a whole third number comes the fuck up. So, um, and it has a, like a picture of a Mustang on it. So when they search the number that is attached to this cash app, it comes to someone named Robert Champion. Search Robert on Facebook, and then lo and behold, his profile has a Mustang on it. So, um, they look at his friends, and Mike is one of them. Uh, so it's looking like Robert is the one who's been cash catfishing her. Um, so they search Todd and Michael Brown and find criminal a criminal history. Um, and one of the aliases for this Todd Michael Brown is Robert Champion. So they go to Casey, explain what they found. 
And once they do, they try calling Mike, but don't get an answer. So they call Mike, or they um, they try to text Mike, and then they call Robert. Uh, Robert picks up, says that Mike is his half brother. Uh, Robert is the one behind the cash app because uh, someone asks him to cash app somebody else, and he does it. Um, so they ask if um, he can talk to Mike, see if he can meet up with Casey, and he's like, it's not a good time, blah, 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 blah. Same old fucking bullshit story. Um, so they plan on going to Tennessee anyway. So, um, and the only reason why, you know, they, they're they going to go is because they feel like it's going to be harder for him to say no to meet up. So next morning, um, they get a text from Mike saying that he will meet up with Casey before they go to the airport. Um, and then they all go to Nashville. After getting off the plane, Neve gets a text, or receives a text, saying uh, to meet him at this address and not to knock on the door, and just go straight to the fucking barn. Um, yeah. Kami was right when they got to the house and to the barn. It's given Texas Chainsaw Massacre type shit. So, um, and it's actually Mike. Um, and... So here we go, here he he starts saying, you know, I've been in and out of jail since I was fucking 13, um, and at this point, I had to fucking pause the damn episode, because I was like, bitch what? Bitch what? <laughs> and this is not even, this is not even the, the worst part of it, this is not even the worst part. Like, this motherfucker says, well, it's irrelevant. Like, no, it's not, because it should be up to the person that you're talking to whether or not they can handle that type of situation or information. It shouldn't be up to you, because, well, yeah, in an ideal world, people will look past it, not everyone's going to. So, you took away their choice about whether or not they can handle that type of information from them and that's what people will have an issue with that you took that choice away from this other person so save me the bullshit like please because th this is why women say men ain't shit because of this shit right here this dude is saying well i've been to jail me being to jail is irrelevant no it's not it, especially, I mean, it's not going to be irrelevant to employers, and it's not going to be irrelevant to romantic relationships, because um, as much as, you know, like I said, as much as people would hope that it's irrelevant, it's not going to be. I mean, it, like I said, it should be up to the person who you're trying to pursue whether or not they can handle that type of fucking information. And once you don't reveal that information for days, weeks, months, years on end, that's when we feel like we're being lied to because then you're, you're insulting me by assuming that I can, I can't handle that information. And maybe not a lot of people can, um, I don't think a lot of people can because, you know, I mean, going to jail for any sort of reason is a lot to deal with um, and uh, people might think that you know uh, if you've gone to jail once you you have a high likelihood of doing it again or going again so what's to stop you from later on down the road after we've had a couple years under our belt and possibly kids from you going to jail so, here I am by myself, raising two, like, a kid or two or more, by my, like, by, like I said, by myself, or uh, whatever, whatever the fuck, and, uh, like, it, it, it shouldn't fall solely on the woman or husband or wh whoever to raise the kid or kids by themselves, because 
here you are fucking so it, it's a whole fucking mess so just be fucking straight up i mean people will respect you a lot more if you just tell them the fucking truth um <laughs> i mean i can't nobody can promise that they will stay and and be in a romantic relationship with you no one can promise that but at the very least they can still want to be your friend at the end of the day so why the fuck are you saying well it's irrelevant no it's not shut the fuck up and get get away from me with that mess so um anyway and that's still not the not not everything so the reason why he vanished fucking twice was because he was talking to some other girl and he got her pregnant and the baby's due in october Again, why women say men ain't shit. Exactly fucking why. Because you let this woman believe that you were exclusively talking to her in a romantic sense. And that that's all there is to it. And you, you let her to believe that she was going to be Event, like you're gonna make this official and be boyfriend and girlfriend and eventually possibly even get married and here you are entertaining other girls and even getting one of them pregnant so um and he he was never gonna fucking tell her i mean he he was gonna string her along because he he viewed her as a backup option and that was it and he was going to um i mean eventually if he if he decided to meet up with her in michigan or she came down to tennessee um he was gonna for sure try to have sex with her and that's it and not make any sort of um not make any sort of commitment towards her and all this stuff so um yeah um they leave for the day uh then the next day they meet up and they talk and he's like well i love the way she chased me i'm like oh god oh god of course you do because you i mean at that point you weren't putting in any fucking effort because you didn't really want to be with her and instead of fucking saying that shit you let her on and I, I mean, I'm I, I, this whole like third portion of the episode. All I wanted to do was throw a fucking you, you, you guys. If any of you ever watched uh, Saved by the Bell, and Zach Morris had that brick phone, <laughs> that's what I wanted to throw at this. That is fucking head because sweet Jesus. I've I, like come on, I should have I should have done, done a poll and asked people if I should watch this episode live because the way I kept pausing and yelling <laughs> top of my lungs because this dude was pissing me off was annoying. And he's like, well, I didn't initiate this whole thing. Like, yeah, you didn't. That is true. But you sure as hell didn't put any boundaries up either. So, nah, yeah. At this point, I'm about ready to, to kick him in the damn gonads and side of, like, call it a day because this dude prime example of why women say men ain't shit i'm sorry that's that is the theme song of the day or the episode i should say um anyway so two months later casey hasn't talked to mike since that day um and i'm glad she hasn't um i'm glad she's she's moving on and trying to just focus on herself and her kids and um uh, and that's about it um they didn't show an update from mike so i'm left to assume his ass went back to jail um and they just didn't want to say nothing 
Um, Because if they tried to reach out to him, I I feel like they would have said, well, we, because in the past they've said we've tried several times to reach out to so-and-so, like the catfish, the person who was doing the catfishing, um, and they refused to answer. They've done that in the past, I remember, Um, but um, for whatever reason, they just didn't offer an update here. So I'm left to, like I said, I'm left to assume his ass went back to jail. Um... Oh well, I mean, if you're gonna be fucking doing all this shit out, I mean, anyways, so that, I mean, man, this, I should have, I should have done a poem and like, uh, should I do a live reaction, like, <laughs> a live reaction to this whole episode, because this, this was terrible, this is the, this has been one of the worst episodes I've seen, <laughs> mainly because of the dude, but, um, yeah, I'm just terrible. I can't, I can't put it in any other words besides that, because that was some shit. That was some other shit. <laughs> I truly cannot. Um, anyway, um, maybe that's a question I should ask you guys. Should I, should I try doing... A live reaction of uh, these episodes in the future um, or just keep it like this um, I mean up to y'all but I'm, I'm cool with whatever so anyways see you guys in the next episode